Here we are folks, the conclusion of Outlander Season 4, and I hope you brought your tissues. Because wow does this finale hit you right in the feels. We open on a snippet of time in the 1960s. Two young white children play in Indian headdresses, while a native man, the ghost Claire saw in the rain earlier this season, sits on a bench in stoic irritation. But before long we're back in 1770, for those keeping track, we've covered about three to four years in Jamie and Claire's lives this season. Jamie and Claire have finally reached the Mohawk, and Jamie observes them with a telescope, keeping his eyes out for Roger. They make their way into the village as Mohawk watch from the trees and Jamie tells them they've come in peace to trade. Ian comes forward, being better versed in their language, and holds out his necklace explaining they are looking for a man they sold to their people. When they show Breeze drawing to the Mohawk, the tribe knows they mean dog face. Again, poor Richard Rankin. The English-speaking Mohawk wants to know why this man is so important to them that they'd come all this way, and he takes them to the chief. After meeting the chief, they offer up nearly everything they have in exchange for Roger. Claire even removes her scarf to hand over, but this reveals the large stone necklace she is wearing which is the stone she discovered alongside the ghostly skull at the start of the season. The tribe recognizes it as Otter Tooth's stone, and they are extremely wary of it. They don't want to trade for it, in fact, they want Claire, Jamie, and Ian to leave immediately. Meanwhile, at River Run, Murtaugh has returned after his daring prison break. Jocasta gives him a hearty meal and prods him about his escape. She wants to know what landed him in jail in the first place. The Crown will be looking for him and she doesn't want trouble at her house. He assures her he's only come to check in on Brie. Jocasta says Brie basically spends all her time in her room or waiting on the porch looking for Roger. She was in better spirits when Lord John was around, and then she shocks Murtaugh by explaining Brie and John are planning to get married. Later, Murtaugh checks in on Brie and questions her about her plans to marry Lord John. She explains it was a plot to stall for time and they don't have any real intention of marrying each other. They're just using it to delay Jocasta while they wait for Roger to get back. Claire senses there's a greater story to the Otter Tooth Stone. Jamie wants to go back to rescue Roger in the dead of night, but Claire doesn't think it's safe. She's right because almost immediately they find themselves surrounded by a group of Mohawk. They want the stone. But Jamie and Claire insist they lonely hand it over if they help them get Roger back. They gather around the fire to get the real story, complete with helpful visual flashbacks for the viewing audience. A man named Otter Tooth, who is hinted at being a time traveler, appeared to them one day and warned them of their future. He raved to the tribe and warned them to kill white men before their people are wiped out. He led a war dance and then took members of the tribe to gather white scalps. This angered the village, as they feared retribution, and so, Otter Tooth was banished. They believed he was possessed by an evil spirit, as he continued his mutterings and kept returning to the village until finally, they were forced to capture him and mark him for death. He escaped, but men pursued him for days into the woods and killed him. Still, his words went on ringing in their ears warning them that the nations of the Iroquois will be no more. They beheaded his corpse to try to stop the sound of his ravings, but it still didn't work. So their current chief took the man's head and buried it far away, which is why Claire discovered it in a thunderstorm earlier this season. The woman explains that they believe the stone has the power to show how their people's story will end and that Otter Tooth's ghost walks with whoever carries it. Claire admits she saw the man's ghost when she was lost in a storm, and that she believes ghosts only exist when they have a message worth relaying. They make a deal to hand over the stone if they help them rescue Roger. This enclave of the Mohawk travels down the river in canoes with Claire and Jamie under the cover of darkness. They sneak into the village and rescue Roger from the idiot hut. Roger is happy to see Claire but not so much Jamie. Jamie tells him my name is Luke Skywalker and I'm here to rescue you he will explain more later. Right now, they need to get going. They set off but are quickly interrupted by a member of the tribe who fires off a musket in warning. All hell breaks loose with Claire trying to help Olympian Roger toward the river, while Jamie fights them off with a club. It's complete mayhem and it's all for naught as they are soon surrounded, 
holding Jamie at gunpoint.